Don't do business this way. You know what you ask for and you know what it costs. Get back to me. appreciate this on such short notice. At what time you're gonna be back? I don't know, really. Eat, eat. Where are you going? To work. Why? To buy extravagant things for my wife. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to leave you my mother's number, just in case. Down on the play. Are you watching this? I'm getting smeared. I got money on this game. Kid. You're late. I can take a bath. Faster than you can get off the phone. No, I'm with you, Myron. Uh, Vivian just walked in. Tell him to just meet us there. Uh, no, just meet us there, and uh, we'll go someplace later. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, mm, we just had the best idea. Mm. Well, I'm not going to Atlantic City. Listen, no. just listen. No, Myron and I are throwing you your first anniversary party. Oh, hey, God. Isn't that a little silly? <laughs> what? Well, you shouldn't have told everybody you got married. Oh, you didn't tell anybody. You did. <laughs> Why are you getting married? You're not pregnant, are you? I never let a girl get pregnant. You never leave a forwarding address. I'm leaving this conversation. Hey. OK. Bye, David. Bye, Mom. See you later. This would be too frivolous for you. Don't people dress anymore? <laughs> one for the lady, another one for me. Oh. Here's to the life of a smashing journalist and one hell of a guy. <laughs> me. <laughs> Excuse me. 
Ah, your new wife has just agreed to edit my new book. I'm happy for both of you. Scotch and water, please. So how's business? Slow. Well, that's what Senate investigations are for. I'll be going to Washington first thing in the morning. Well. You didn't tell me you were going. I just didn't get a chance. Cheers. Gotta go. Call you tonight. I'll be back tomorrow. In the evening sometime. It wouldn't hurt to eat something between now and then. Yes, uh, Ezra Goldstein, please. Thank you. One moment, please. Hello? Who's this? Simon Katz. Who's this? S Simon, is this your room? Of course it's my room. Who are you looking for? Who's this? Who is this? This is Vivian Goldstein. I'm looking for my husband. Actually, this is his room. I, I guess I fell asleep in the boss's room. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, God, I'm so embarrassed. Good evening, Hotel National. Yes. Simon Katz, please. Thank you. One moment, please. I'm sorry. I've asked not to be disturbed. May I take a minute? Yeah. You can tell him his wife called and says that she hopes he's having a good time. No, wait, never mind. There's no message. Gets me mad. He's a good boy, but not our responsibility. He needs good food, clean clothes, someone to watch him. You must speak to your daughter. She doesn't listen to me. I say. Bye. Where are you going? To work. Why? 
Look, I know I don't have a right to ask you to do any more than you've already done, but do you think you could just watch him until I can find my daughter, until I can talk to Ellen? This is a surprise. You're a lot bigger than the last time I saw you. go to a meeting now, so you just be a critic and you tell me how you like all these books when I get back, okay? Come on, come on. You sit here and you stay here. I'll be back. Coming of a grandmother. She's letting me stew. She's blaming me for the wreck she's made of her own life. Isn't that always the way? No. Grouch, four down. Crab. Crab. Hmm. Good. Well. Well, what would you think of the books I left with you? Did you like them? What was your favorite? David, pile those books back where you found them, would you please? That's not what we do with books. Come here. David, come here. Come here. Did you read any of these stories? Can't read. Seven years old. Don't you go to school? Not always. Do you have to go to the bathroom? Ellen, this is your mother. I want you to know that this is the most base, irresponsible crap you've yet to pull. I appreciate your letting me know the new depths to which you've allowed your life to sink, but I'd like you to get your self-destructive ass over here and take your child home.
David. What's happened here? Are you all right? Is that blood? Ellen has done the most. Hi, I'm Ezra Goldstein. We've never met. You know, Louis Poloni blew the light middleweight title in 48, ramming his fist through his wife's bedroom door the night before the fight. Ruined his hands. Never fought again. This might sting a little. David, do you have any idea where your mother might be? My mom takes drugs. That's why she goes away all the time. That's why I'm small and I don't concentrate like other kids. That's why I can't read. What do you usually like for dinner? Each up a casserole. I want ice cream like him. Give it to him. I can't do this again. I can't find myself sitting up all night waiting for the morgue to call. You're overreacting. I'm sure she'll turn up. It never mattered what I said or what I did. Once she started taking drugs, I lost her. 
that that person who was once my child just, just turned into somebody else. And there wasn't a damn thing I could do about it. Come to bed. Are you sorry we got married? I always get married. Are you? on Charlie to be with me. Me? I cheated on everyone to be with you. What'd you think you were gonna get? A gold watch? Come on, kid. Laugh it up. These are the jokes. Simon! Who was that? That was your wife. She said she'll meet you at the restaurant. Fine. What? You're not my grandfather, are you? For some reason, I kept a lot of old junk back here. Aha! Come here. What yeah, is it? This is what I wanted to show you. That's your grandfather. That's Grandma? Yeah. Grandma sure was a good-looking girl, huh? She still looks good, but... Where are you? Around somewhere, I imagine. Baltimore on the phone for you. Wait here, I'll be right back. Who the hell would steal from me? Who the hell would be stupid enough to steal from me? Simon, get your ass in here. I'll fax over a letter requesting verification. Fax him hell, I'll tear his throat out. I know it's a misunderstanding. Whenever we catch him stealing, it's a misunderstanding. No. I don't want to check for the difference when he says. I want to check for the difference when I says. Tell him by Friday. No, don't fire him. I like people working for me who owe me big. Just tell him 40% interest. Then phone me Ooh. back and tell me what shade of green he turns. What time is it? 6.35. I'm late. But I want you to go over there and get those books now. All right. Don't bring them back here. Put them someplace all safe. All right, all right. Don't worry about it. We just made sixty thousand dollars. What do you look like you're gonna pee in your pants? I'm late. I'm late. When you hear what happened, you won't believe what hooks for there is in this world. Where's David? What? David. Hey! Hey! hey. Back where we came from. I saw him, we were in here. How you doing? about the manager entering the tenant's apartment without permission? What have you got there? Oh, I have the coffee cake. 
my husband likes that. You know, my grandmother used to make something like that every single Friday. She called it a babka. Yeah, this is babka. Excuse me. I'm not supposed to do this. You haven't seen my daughter? No. Look, I know you're... You're doing me a very big favor, and I promise you that there won't be any trouble. Okay, let's go. I appreciate your letting me know the new depth to which you've allowed your life to sink, but I'd like you to get your self-destructive ass over here and take your child home. Mrs. Levinson? Would you like some babka? or when she's coming back. I know. After all these years, I'd like to think of us as friends. Like we are. Then you ought to know that I'd never leave you when you needed me. So you can go ahead and count on me. <laughs> and while you're doing that, you can give me some more money. Push. Oh, oh, jab, jab, use the jab. Come on, yeah, use the jab. Jab, jab, jab. Get out of there. Get out of there. Well, I could take you with one hand tied behind my back. And he comes back. Whoa, whoa. Oh. And he fights. I didn't. And it's almost over. Listen, I'm, I'm here to watch a fight, not to get in one. Okay, you know, okay. Okay, well, that's it. I mean, does it tickle or does it tickle? 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 Or does it tickle?
Look like a lost weekend, or is she blown for good? I'm just glad you're better at this than I am. Better at what? David. You understand him. You know how to be nice to him. I don't get excited. I'm nice to everybody. Yeah. Till you kick him in the teeth. That's right. Till I kick him in the teeth. You said it. Hey. Listen, baby. Alan's pulled one over on you, and you're all bent out of shape about it. But don't take it out on me. Remember, I'm on your side. <laughs> Thanks. It's nothing. Just a force of habit. Honey, I think you overshot your mark. All we have to do is find this woman and give her her kid back. Tell me, Ezra, do you just plow through life slicing things up to suit yourself, or do you ever feel anything? Pain, remorse, anything. Oh, so that's what this is about. Well, I'll tell you a little something. I can't help it if you come home one night and decide to go off on some kind of guilt trip. Doesn't mean I have to go with you. Well, fine. Let's just go to Alfred's party and get it over with. You'll get to Alfred's and cheer up soon enough with him. But right now, you have to talk to me. And I don't have any regrets. I've done it all just the way I said I would, and I haven't promised anybody a damn thing, and I don't know what you were talking about. Well, let's just say this is the first sobering experience I've had in a long time. Sobering experience? And what exactly is that? No, really. No, I'd like to know. Please, tell me. What is it? Is it something like a hot flash? Oh, go to hell. Well, then, like what? Like being your wife is a sobering experience. Oh. For 25 years, I was a prince, and now I'm a sobering experience. Well, when Charlie was hanging around your neck, you sure as hell were glad to see me. When Charlie was alive, I took up with the first most convenient diversion that came along. Oh, I see. And that would be me. We're a terrific pair, you and I. Yeah. Well, I think you can just go to Alfred's party alone. Ezra. Ezra. Maybe this was all a mistake. Maybe this whole marriage was a mistake. We may very well have to look at that possibility. can't be everything. No, it's not everything, but it's all there is for now. It all happened a long time ago. I don't see how I'm supposed to remember every damn thing I did. Perhaps you could fill in some of the blanks. Oh, shut up, Alfred. Well, you're in a bitchy mood. Ugh. So tell me, how's that gangster you married? Ezra's not a gangster. Excuse me, mobster. Say, I wonder how many poor punch-drunk fighters he's robbed blind. Why don't you ask him? So what did he do? Did he call you from a Friday afternoon poker game? What are you doing this weekend? What do you say, you and me go get married? <laughs> what are you, wife number six? Six is a good number. Right after five, just before number seven. I think it suits you. I'd say you wear it well. Yeah. Yeah, you can bring it in. Poor Charlie. It took him years to catch on to his old pal, Ezra. I was always feeling sorry for Charlie. I thought you'd stop drinking, Alfred. I suppose you would have done the same with me. <laughs> really, I'd lay off the booze if I were you. Charlie's father liked you well enough, didn't he? Well, he gave you Charlie's job as a wedding present. I've always meant to ask you, is it a good job? <laughs> Your father-in-law had a very high opinion of you. I want this finished by Christmas. Sure, Angel, sure. All right. Whoa. Anything you say, say the word. You know, you've still got great legs. Even if I have to sober you up to do it. Oh, don't start that with me. Drunk or sober, I've never missed a deadline in my life. 
Yeah, well, I hope tomorrow morning you remember you said that. Well, don't just sit there stiff as a board. Hey. <laughs> I remember you when you were nothing but a stupid, skinny kid. You stop. And believe me, you're no angel. Yeah, be careful of this. It's my life right here. You look tired. Thank you. How's Ezra? He's gone to Washington. <laughs> you know, with the architects in the District of Columbia on his back, to do a project like he has in mind, I'm surprised he does as much of it as he does from here. Nice try. Next time I see my husband, I'll tell him you gave it your best shot. Well, what are you going to say? Coffee. Do you have what you want me to sign? This will hold you for 18 months or until Ellen shows up. Well, and what then? It's up to you, sweetheart. What the hell does that mean? Well, it depends on how or if you care to tangle with your own daughter. You can't blame yourself, Vivian. It's too much of everything. They don't know what they want. <laughs> like we know what we want. Sign the last page. I'll witness it. Muzzle tough. You're now a temporary guardian. Thanks. Well, what's this? Only one in the welcoming committee? Is Ezra coming back? Bunch of jacket. I liked him. Oh, I think this is it's gonna work. Yeah, yeah. There we go. It's very handsome. Now you can play outside and you can be warm. Isn't he ever coming back? Are you gonna find my mom so she knows where I am? I think she knows. Why do you guys leave? Go inside. You play, huh? No. I'm never gonna leave.
Hello. And and showed showed fair there and the same word terrible cool laws but Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye and sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day and into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him and it was, it was still hot hot it was still hot okay i wish that when i went to sleep i turned into a vicious incredibly strong monster that wonders that i'm beating up all the bad people and i wake up myself in the morning how do you know you don't I'm gonna go back and live with my mom again. You want to? Maybe she can come here and live with us. And you can take care of her, too. You miss your mom? Do you? Mm -hmm. Good night, kiddo. Love you. do it. See how you can spread that all over. Try not to go all around the edges, that's it. Happy anniversary, Mr. Goldstein. Ezra. Ezra. Mike Santucci, Ezra. Yeah, I know. I'm flattered. <laughs> Don't be. Mike's recently taken over his uncle's management. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, we've got a new fighter that I think you ought to take a look at. 
Anytime you guys want me to come down and take a look at him. As a matter of fact, he's fighting in Vegas tomorrow night. Myra and Sophia are coming. Why don't you and your wife come along? <laughs> well, I don't have that much to do with fight promoting anymore. I'm more into commercial development, Washington, Baltimore, that sort of thing. <laughs> Ezra. Ezra, mm. I promise you it'll be worth the trip. But at the very least, you'll have a great time, and I'll have you back early Monday morning. Uh, this is my wife, Vivian. Hi. Oh, hi. No. Hi, Vivian. Yeah, earlier. Well, yeah. Hello hi. again. Hello. <laughs> We're going down to Vegas for the weekend. The two of you should really join us. You'll have a terrific time. Mike knows how to take care of his guests. Yes, you should come. It'll be fun. That's right. It'll be fun. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm not going without you. What, are we tied to this kid for the rest of our lives? It's been a month already. Is this it? Is this how it's going to be for the rest of our lives? I can't even think straight. We hardly ever go out. When I come home, we eat dinner, a whole production in and of itself. We do homework. We go to bed. Another production. Let me tell you, I've come a long way without raising a kid, and I didn't wait this long to start. What would you like me to do? All right, then tell me this. Why is it when Ellen was the same age, living in the same house, going to the same school, and on top of it, you were married to her father, you could still run around with me? Las Vegas sounds like fun. Chicago, pick me up at the office. The plaza, meet you there at two. I don't need this from you, Ezra. Tell you what. You come to Vegas with me tomorrow, and I'll get some poor yuts to marry you. Turning us into a legit operation has taken something out of it for you, obviously. How was your party? It was very nice. How'd it go? He's been asleep a long time. Good. Well, good night. Good night, Sarah. Thank you. Night. Good night, Sarah. Will you just let me do that? Okay. Let's calm down. If I never see Santucci, his fighter, or the state of Nevada again, it will be too soon. But finally, we're together. Finally, we thought we'd be able to take off in a minute and do whatever we wanted. And then from out of nowhere. I know.
muerte. He likes to sit in the closet. I disappeared. Where did he go? My goodness, where did David go? <laughs> Why, he must have vanished into thin air. <laughs> did you see that, Alfred? Where could he have gone? <laughs> mine, my, mine, my, mine, my, my. I do hope he comes back. You were always the most unlikely candidate for motherhood. No one was ever asked to take a vote, Alfred. You know what's interesting? You're being in the same house, Charlie's house, with both me and Ezra. Alfred. It had just the right sort of bohemian weirdness when it was you, me, and Charlie coming out here to work, but this is different. Alfred, I know writing your autobiography has put you in a reflective state of mind, but I really would appreciate it if you would just censor those reflections for the benefit of certain parties. You mean no dirt in front of the kid. <laughs> but I thought he disappeared a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't you found something to do yet? Hi. Hi. How are you today? Great. Listen, uh, we were just wondering if David would like to come over and play. Where's your dad? I don't have one. Everybody has to have a dad. I don't think I do. My mom never got married. Well, no where's your mom? I don't know. Who do you want to? <laughs> I mean, where's your home? I'm a free agent. All right. Oh. Hey, break. Ah. I could take you with one hand tied behind my back. I Ew. dropped a bomb on you and brought you into little tiny pieces. Uh, hey, 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 hey. What you got there? Ever flown an airplane like this before? How old do you think I am? A million and a half years old. Why? It's just, I'm just guessing. <laughs> My dad's gonna come and beat up anybody who starts with you, bud. Your dad? Yeah. <sighs> you know, Jake, uh, 
When I was your age, I didn't have a dad either. What happened? Well, he didn't like it here. So he went back to Poland. Why? Because he was a Polak. But you, you <laughs> got nothing to worry about because I'm here. And I'm going to take care of you and Grandma. And Alfred? Uh, he can take care of himself. Hey, come on. Let's read the paper. Okay. Okay. Let's start there. Price. Right. Price. Con. True. Rolls. Yes! Oh, wow. A party. Love a party. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> of course, I was being a little ironic there. Eh? <coughs> oh. <sighs> I thought I'd dress for dinner. Oh, mm, lovely. Mm, lovely, really. Mm. You've really got to read Alfred's manuscript. Whoever comes up with the title wins a prize. What's that? Crap. I'll think of something appropriate. The Great Fraud. Congratulations. You win the gallon of black coffee and a cold shower. We're all frauds, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Speak for yourself, but remember, there's a child at the table. Whores and mean, dastardly scoundrels. Living their twilight years, counting their gold and bouncing some poor kid on their knee to make up for all the whoring and degradation they've brought on themselves and everybody they've ever laid a hand on. Did I hear right? Have you come into my house and called my wife a whore? <laughs> Who are you? Who the hell do you think you are? I'm just an old friend of the family. <laughs> oh, I've outlived one husband. And I'm sure I'll be around when you've moved on to the next poor, unfortunate object of your affections. I'm sure you've got her picked out already. You're nothing but a pompous old washed up drunk. You don't know anything. Hey. I know more than you could ever get. You didn't finish your dinner. Is Susan sticking up for us? Hey. Thinks he is. And he is. You and Ezra, you're your buddies, huh? Mm-hmm. And you know something else? I actually feel sorry for you. I don't need the sympathy of a glorified street thug. Well, don't be so sure I don't throw you out of here. What are you doing? I'm reading Alfred's mail. Get me wrong. I don't care if you had the hots for this yutz. Maybe you still do. But this interests me. He's got a ton of these. All that is from you. This one is uh, July 2nd, 1974. Dear Alfred, it seems we can't complete a conversation without one of us running to leave town. But it's important you understand that you cannot depend on my ever leaving Charlie. 
I won't because too much of my life revolves around him. I am sorry for the unhappiness I've caused you and for the jumble of promises we've made that must go unfulfilled. Forgive me. Vivian. Breakfast already, hmm? I cooked. Cooked? Yeah, so you did. Hmm. You were fighting with us for last night. Was I? Oh. Yes. Yes, I suppose I was. Yeah. I like Ezra. I like my grandma, too. Good, good. So do I. You shouldn't say bad things to them. No, you're right. I shouldn't. Then don't do it anymore. Okay, all right, okay. Hey, just relax, relax. Hmm? Let's just eat. Look, I'm sorry, Ian. What's your name? David. I'm sorry, David. I didn't mean to upset you. Did Grandma and Ezra do something bad? No. Is it bad that I live with them? <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, I didn't mean anything. I've known them for a long time. Sometimes you say stupid things. kids? No. Why? I don't know. Just never did. I guess it would have been nice to have had a little boy like you. After all, you can cook. Not 
Happy Bye. birthday, boy, Jake. Bye. 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 See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Is that a party or what? Hey. What's the matter? Down in the mouth? Too much ice cream and cake? I had too much ice cream and cake. Do you think my mom knows it's my birthday? Maybe she'll call. I'm feeling extra generous today on account of Big Jake here turning the big eight. I thought maybe I could be persuaded into taking the two of you to the movies. How about? Come on. Hasn't rung all night. gonna say to each other, Vivian? You gonna call me cruel and irresponsible? Unfit, maybe? <laughs> An addict? at home with me. I don't know. Um, look, uh, I'm off hard drugs now. I'm back in town. I'm going to hit all the publishing companies for a job. Yeah, get my career back on track. I've come to take him home with me. Oh, God. I love you more than anything in the world. <laughs> and the worst of it was that the feeling that I had lo I had lost you. I had you, and I lost you. Sitting here, I feel like a kid. You're a grown woman. I remember being uh, eight or nine, maybe. That time you left Daddy at a New Year's Eve party and ran off with Ezra. Ellen, what happened between your father and me happened between your father and me. It had nothing to do with the way we felt about you. Well, he was standing right down there in the garden. <laughs> Rave and drunk. That's 
filthy Orchard Street whore thinks she can screw around with that gangster under my nose and get away with it. <laughs> well, I, I went down there and I found him lying in the snow. <laughs> I thought he'd freeze to death. So I lay on top of him to keep him warm. Mommy didn't love us anymore. How he was gonna take us away someplace where you would never find us. <laughs> and he went to live on a farm with a nurse. <laughs> Strange remedy giving an alcoholic a nurse. What was I supposed to do? Don't ask me. You were never there. I was there. Well, you stopped being there. What exactly did you want me to stick around for? To watch you die? Is that what you wanted? You wanted me to just stand around and watch you kill yourself? You wouldn't let me do anything else. So now it's my fault. Now you're gonna keep David from me. I'm being punished, is that it? Where have you been for the last five months of his life? <laughs> Oh, you can come in here and you can try to make me feel guilty about your childhood, about your father. You can take drugs, you can do anything you want, anything you damn well please, Ellen. You're a big girl now, but you can't take David out of this house. Ice cream. But we'll take you out to dinner. It's only right to take a broad out every now and then. <sighs> Let me just. Let me see if I'm understanding you correctly. Ellen came here today and said she wanted to take David back. And you said not on your life or something very much like that. Yes. Well, damn it. Vivian, you can't make decisions like that without talking to me first. My mom was here. My mom was here. She was here and you didn't even tell me. David. David? David? What do you want me to do? You expect me to turn that kid over to his mother just because she politely asked without even thinking about what it might do to him? My mother took off for a week every time she went out for a bottle of milk. I'm a perfectly well-adjusted individual. David? I disappeared. Well, if, if you want to come out and talk, we'll talk, okay? Okay. You have no business screwing around with this, Vivian. Ellen's back, and he is Ellen's son. Where are you going? I'm going to Washington for a couple of days. If you and your precious Ellen don't mind, I still have a living to make. My whole life is turned upside down because of some drug addict whom I've only met a handful of times. That drug addict happens to be my daughter. So she's got it in for me because I've been banging your mother for 25 years. Well, I guess it's not fair to count this last year. Damn you. Listen, not too many broads your age can find a man my age who can still hold up his end of the bargain, so to speak. You got me making peanut butter sandwiches for some eight-year-old. There are plenty of women out there who can find better things to do with my time. 
You know, I don't blame you for not taking responsibility your whole life because you sure as hell don't hold up well under the strain. To be perfectly honest, Vivian, it's not my responsibility. Ellen is not my daughter. How the hell are you so damn sure? As long as we're being honest. Would you care to explain this incredible remark? I was running back and forth between you and Charlie. What are you saying? Are you crazy? You know how much he wanted a kid. You know how much he wanted something to prove that he and I had a marriage. But if you think about it, Ezra, if you think real hard about it, logic would favor you every time. Congratulations. I snuck into a lot of hotel rooms in the middle of the afternoon, Ezra, but you were always there waiting for me. And when your old pal Charlie died, you slipped into his side of the bed while it was still warm. What does that make you? I'm just the one who got pregnant. If that's what you thought, well, why didn't you say something about it then? Because I knew I would lose you. I'm still going to Washington. Give her my love. I didn't think you cared one way or another. I care. You can't keep David. Ellen has a legal right to have her son back. It ain't worth it, Vivian. No matter how it turns out, it ain't worth it. Starting up with Helen will be the worst thing you could do. Well, what do I do? It would kill me to see you and David go through a thing like that. Where's Ezra? Uh, I'm a partner. I follow the money. I know where he is. Do you know where he is? What do I do? Don't start up with Ellen. You've got to give David back to her. Listen. We'll get you visitation rights in exchange for payment and approval of all educational expenses. That way we hang on to a measure of control, all right? I'll get it written up and arrange everything, OK? You got to do it. Come on. I like the color in there, but you do have this one has a lot of contrast. Yeah, right? visually, right? Oh, exactly. Uh, this one hits you in the eye. The others don't. This is too bright. It's got some warmth in it. Yeah, Mark. What? Alfred McGuinness is dead.
heard about Alfred. I'm sorry. kiddo. I need an Alka-Seltzer or a cyanide capsule. What was the matter? You'd figure I'd go to that SOB's funeral and I'd get indigestion. sleeping here tonight? Of course I'm sleeping here tonight. Where are you sleeping tomorrow night? It's over. I'm too old for this crap. It's just that you and me, we... We're no good at anything unless it takes place in a bar or a boardroom. Perfect ending to a beautiful moment. It's what's his name from your office. Anything else I can do for you, Mrs. Levinson? Mrs. Goldstein. Mrs. Goldstein. Mrs. Goldstein. Let me go. Alfred's manuscript. It's dedicated to David Levinson.
believe this. Neither do I, kiddo. I don't believe we've met. Wait for me outside. He's the one you're living with? He's from Boston. I found a job in Boston. You know, maybe we're gonna get married. And then maybe after we get settled on, maybe David could come and live with us then. You know, you're a lot more like me than you ever wished for. I have to go. Well, maybe it doesn't matter to you. Don't go. I've got a shot at life now, and I'm going to take it. Your life is here. Your life is with David. Helen, you'll never be happy away from him. Never make up for it. We got us a kid. She's gone, honey. She just left again. She didn't even say anything. She said she loves you. Very, very, very much.